This is a lie detector. It is used to determine whether or not a person, such as a suspect accused of a crime, is lying. How does it know if somebody is lying, you may ask? Well, when a person lies, one thing their body does is sweat because they're often nervous. And sweat will make body parts such as the fingers more conductive. And in this case, you would place your, if you're being interrogated or interviewed, you would place your fingers between these two points. And if you're telling the truth, your fingers will be dry because sweat or be nervous if you're telling the truth. And in this case, the speaker will hum, will buzz at a low frequency, and the LED will flash dimly. But if I was very nervous and I was really sweating, I'm just going to wet my fingers, then the pitch of the sound will be higher and the lamp will come on, indicating that I'm telling something that is not true. Now, real life lie detectors, which are known as polygraphs used in the criminal justice field, actually rely on more than just a person's sweat to determine whether or not they are lying. When a person gets nervous, not only does sweating increase, but also their heartbeat and pulse, which makes it easier to determine whether or not they are telling the truth. Unfortunately, clever people can fool them. And that's why lie detector, I'm guessing, lie detector or polygraph tests are not as common as they used to be because it's very easy for somebody to fool them. But this is just for demonstration purposes only. But you could ask, a, you could have a friend try it out and ask him or her questions and say if they are telling the truth or not based on how loud the pitch, of, how, based on the pitch of the sound and brightness of the LED and lamp. Project 124 is the MPN amplifier. Now, MPN transistor, the MPN transistor is the focus component in this project, and it has three components. There's the base right here, the collector up top, and the emitter down at the bottom. I'm going to slowly move the lever on the adjustable resistor away from me, and as I do so, the green LED will brighten and current will flow into the base of the MPN transistor to the emitter. Then a larger or amplified current will flow from the collector to the emitter, and as a result, the lamp will be much brighter than the green LED. The PMP amplifier is similar to the MPN amplifier, but the focus component is the PMP transistor. With the PMP transistor, the electric currents will flow in the opposite directions of that of the of those of the MPN transistor. As I move the adjustable resistor lev lever toward me, the red LED will brighten and current will a small current will flow from the emitter to the base. And then the lamp will become much brighter as a larger amplified current will flow from the emitter to the collector. So it's the reverse of the MPN transistor once again. Project 126 is sucking fan. I have the motor oriented so that the positive end is facing me. I'm going to turn on the slide switch and move the lever on the adjustable resistor. Now in most settings, the fan will not spin because the resistance would be too high to overcome friction in the motor. But on a very narrow range of settings, the fan will rotate. 
Now, if the fan spins fast enough, it's possible that could fly off the motor because of the way in which it's spinning. It's sucking air from above and forcing it down. If it does spin fast enough, the, like, like I said, the fan could fly off, but that would be the same principle of how a helicopter flies because when the rotors spin, which would be in a counterclockwise direction, forcing the air down, air would be forced down and the vehicle could lift off the ground into the air. Also, this principle enables helicopters to hover or stay in one place in the air. And that's what makes them useful for many different purposes. And they could also take off and land without the need of a runway. For a blowing fan, I turned the motor around so the positive side is facing away from me. I'm going to turn on the slide switch. And again, the range of settings is very narrow. But when the fan is spinning, it's going to blow air up. So it's going to force air from below above. And as a result, the fan will not fly off the motor even if it was spinning very fast because the resistance will be the force of the air blowing will hold it down on the motor. And this is a type of fan that ideally you would use to move air for cooling. Project 128 is PMP Collector. I'm going to turn on the slide switch, and for most of the range on the RV, the lamp will be off. But again, there's a narrow range in which it's on, and it can get very bright. This project is named such because the part of the PMP transistor that the lamp is connected to is the collector. but you do have a pretty bright lamp you can use for different purposes. Project 130 is MPN collector. Instead of using the PMP transistor, I'm using the MPN one and the lamp is connected to the collector part. I'm gonna turn on the slide switch and move the RV lever. Again, the range is narrow, but the lamp will light brightly and you could compare the brightness of the lamp in this circuit with that of Project 128. And you'll notice that the results are similar because the, both transistors are made from the same materials. Switching the positions of the lamp and three snap wire, I'm going to turn on the switch. Now the lamp is collected, connected to the collector of the MPN transistor and it won't be as bright as in the previous project, although it would be the same brightness as in project 129, the PMP emitter. Project 132 is the MPN collector slash motor. Instead of using the lamp, we're using the motor with the fan. And when I turn on the slide switch, despite the range being narrow, the fan will rotate. It's connected to the collector on the MPN transistor. Project 133 is the MPN emitter with motor. When I turn on the slide switch, because the fan, the fan won't spin as fast as in the previous project because now the, it is connected to the emitter on the MPN transistor, not the collector. So the results are similar to that of the lamp as the lamp had less power when it was connected to the emitter versus the collector. Project 134 is buzzing in the dark. Now, when I, when light is shining on the photoresistor, the circuit makes a very high pitched noise, but when I cover the photoresistor, or better yet, remove light from it, expose it to less light, the circuit will make a buzzing sound. It's much quieter. 
Project 135 is Touch Buzzer. I removed the photo resistor, and now I'm going to touch my fingers between the two points where it used to be, and you hear a pleasant buzzing sound. And this resistance will be similar, is similar to that from the photoresistor when there's limited light shining on it to make this uh, frequency uh, buzzing. Project 136 is high frequency touch buzzer. I replaced the speaker with the six volt or L2 lamp and I removed, I left the photoresistor removed so I can touch my fingers between the two points and the sound is much quieter, but more pleasant. The lamp here, I think, serves as a resistor, so it won't light. Project 137 is high frequency water buzzer. I am going to put the ends of these jumper wires in a cup of water, and you will hear a pleasant buzzing sound. It's louder than when I use my fingers because the water is more conductive than my skin. This is a mosquito. I put the photoresistor back where it was in Project 134, but listen. As I move my hand over the photoresistor, the whistle chip sound makes a sound that's a lot like that of a mosquito. When it's pitch changes, it sounds like that kind of bug. Project 139 is high sensitivity voice doorbell. I'm going to let the music play. The lamp lights, the music is heard through the whistle chip. Then I'm going to talk from a distance, loudly. Hello? How are you doing? That didn't work, but I'm going to just tap my leg. And the sound starts up again. The microphone is very sensitive. So it's possible that if you talk loud enough from even a few feet away, the doorbell will play music. Yeah, I just slide my leg. I wouldn't recommend that. But. And there you have it. Project 140 is louder doorbell. I replaced the lamp with the antenna, and now the sound will be louder. I'm going to kind of lightly slot my leg. And the sound starts, and you may be able to tell that it is louder than in the previous project. This is very loud doorbell. As you can see, I replaced the antenna with the speaker. Now it will be much louder. Anybody home? I just wanted to try activating it with my voice, but the sound is much louder than in Project 140. This is doorbell with button. I'm going to push and release the press switch and the music will play. This is similar to how you have to push a button to ring the doorbell of your house. 143 is darkness announcer. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get this. This doesn't seem to be working the way it should be. Like, when you cover the photoresistor, the music is supposed to play. But when you shine light on it, it will play. That's opposite of what the purpose of this project is.
One project I can get to work is the musical motion detector. With the motor mounted, if I spin it either way, the music will play. It doesn't matter which direction the motor is mounted. Yep, there you have it.